Hi guys, my name is Jerry from Wild Eye and this is Photo Talk. I think we're up to week four now under the new Wild Eye banner. And if you're just joining or you haven't been for a while, this used to be the Photo Africa weekly chat, but lots has happened. Photo Africa's merged with Moya Watenga. We formed Wild Eye, much bigger, much better, very exciting stuff. So, um, before we get going on all the talk topics for today, the things you have to do is go and check out the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash wild eye SA. That'll give you all the information, the updates, um, and if you have been following, which is very exciting, we had our official office opening launch. Well, unofficial, official still coming up. Unofficial office launch and on Friday evening. So, um, the idea was just come over for a drink, see what we've got. We're very proud of our office, it's a fantastic place. So, we had uh, about 150 of our closest friends, families, and uh, good people around for a couple of drinks in the back, which is always very important. And yeah, just to kind of get the word out there, to start rolling with this whole thing. Very exciting. So, for today's tutorial, what I thought we'd do is, I stuck our GoPro camera up into the corner of the office. So as you walk in, this thing was shooting into the office. Today's tutorial, to kick us off, is how to create a stop motion video, where you've got a whole bunch of sequential images, and you stick them all together into like a movie. I always remember when I grew up, you would see on the TV or at the movies, whatever, these, these, these like stop motion pictures of where they build high skyscrapers and it goes as you build up and it's a series of images that um, ultimately looks like a very jerky type of movie. I thought it was pretty cool. Anyway, so for now, using QuickTime 7 on Mac, I'm not sure if it's the same for PC, using QuickTime 7, um, I've taken all of those images into a little movie. So, first off, here's the tutorial of how I did this. Check it out. Alright, so as an exercise, we're going to have a quick, very, very quick look at how to create a stop motion uh, video using a whole series of sequential images. First up, this is my directory over here where I've got the GoPro images shot back to back. So you can see here they go from 332 and the time runs down. This was set on 30 seconds, so there should be two at each interval, like you see here. So there's my whole, there's a whole batch of them all together. I scroll up to the very top and I leave it there. Right now, I open up QuickTime 7. All right, you'll see at the top here that it's been loaded. I go to File, I scroll down to Open Image Sequence, click once. All right, now it asks me to go to this directory. So I go to the same directory and I select, I only have to select the very first image. So I just make sure that's the top on there. Select and click Open. All right, this is depending on what kind of, um, of, of, of intervals you were shooting at. You can set here. For me, at 30 seconds, 6 frames per second works pretty well. This is on the video playback, right? So, I then click OK. The computer is now busy doing its thing, crunching all that information, and then it's going to throw open the video on the first one. And you need to make sure this fits to the screen. And, right, there you go. So, that is the office. This is the GoPro, my desk on the side here, Andrew sitting on the side, our lecture facility through the back, and then the whole thing is a bit of an odd gallery with all of our prints scattered over. The studio, photography studio is just around the corner at the back. Anyway, not important. For now, um, this, this QuickTime 7 has now taken this whole series of images that we have here and it's stuck it together into a little movie for us. So, I can just click play and you'll see that that starts running. And you can see every 30 seconds what happened. That's pretty cool. Anyway, we'll play this video later on. But, job, yeah, that's how you do it. Give me a shout if you have any questions and we will take it from there. Right, you see, pretty simple. Couple of steps and you're good to go. Now, what you can do is, um, with most cameras, the newer DSLR cameras, you can set it up on a tripod and you can have the camera take different images at whatever time. 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds or so on. That specific, Im the, the, the video you're going to see now is the one and a half, or not even, one, one, one minute and a couple of seconds of the, um, what the GoPro took. This is every 30 seconds, so um, this is the result. Check it out.
There you go. You see, so that is a stop motion of the first couple of the guests arriving at our office. So if you want to play back again, if you're looking at the office, my side on the left, that's my desk, Andrew's on the right there, photography and destinations, we do the whole thing there. Very cool offices. If you're ever in four ways, pop on in and we can discuss whatever you want to discuss. We'll have a cup of coffee, talk photography, uh, big word, talk photography or talk travel because that is what we do. On that, I've been getting a huge amount of um, emails from you guys for with regards to our upcoming expeditions for next year. This is a photographic expedition. So, yes, the website's coming. We are hopefully by middle of this week, we should have a, a website out. The problem is the amount of content we're loading onto this thing is quite phenomenal because there's a whole huge range of lodges, um, there's all our expeditions, all our courses, and then the blogs are going to plug in. So, what I used to do a lot of is blog on Photo Africa. Have had a bit of a withdrawal thing, but as soon as this website's up, again, two, three, up to five times a week, new blogs, new images, whatever you guys, and then, um, yeah, we'll take it from there. Anyway, a lot of you guys have been asking um, what trips we have next year, and the pressure's building. So, anyway, just to let you know, uh, Rihanna, Tristan, Cara, and all you guys, that um, we, are, we actually do have a plan. Right, this here is my list, I don't know if you can see that, from cut and plate. That is our list of expeditions for next year, and I mean just a couple, Tanzania in Feb, lots of Botswana all over the place, these are all photographic guys, this is us getting you to the right place and you get to shoot alongside us, it's purely, there's no egos, no anything, we go out there to photograph together the best that Africa has to offer, and not just Africa because there's more. So lots of Botswana, um, we've got Timbavati a couple of times where we're looking for leopard and big five. Um, Great White Sharks, in, when is that? 25 to 29th of July next year, that's 2012. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you, you remember we did this a while ago. On this particular trip this year, we just did one morning. And I think I said so afterward, it's probably the most exciting hour and a half, that first hour and a half in the morning, I have ever had with a camera on my hand. So, what we've done for next year is we've booked the, the operator, Chris Fallows, and then from Apex Predators, for four mornings back to back. These guys book out years in advance. We've got those dates and we are going to photograph great white sharks when they jump up and out of the water. Fantastic stuff. Then also, lots happening in East Africa next year. We've got as much as 10. That's 10. Count them. Feel like one of those people on Idol. Phone 10. No. Uh, we've got 10 weeks in the Mara next year. Three of which is photographic. Uh, which I'll be taking between end of August and middle of September. Again, dedicated photographic safari stuff. We call them expeditions. The moment we travel with the, with the camera, it's an expedition because it's an adventure. That's what we're after. Then a couple more Botswana's towards the end of the year and one that we've also now confirmed from the 10th to the 19th of December 2012, we will be doing a Patagonian photographic adventure. We've chartered a ship, so the Wild Eye uh, Charter Cruise will be going out around the Chilean fjords and all of that to photograph your penguins, whales, glaciers, fantastic. All of those will be up on the website very, very shortly. So anyway, um, for those of you who have email, I will be dropping you an email with some of the details. Again, there's the whole year mapped out. A lot of busy year next year. Anyway, so I will get those to you as soon as I can. Also, make sure to keep the website. As soon as the website goes live, you guys will know about it and we can roll it out from there. Um, other interesting news. What has happened this week? When you finish with this, make sure to also check our talking travel with Andrew. Uh, he is off to the Khalakhari as we speak, so this we recorded on Friday. This week he's looking at a comparison between Madikwe and the Pilansburg from a travel point of view and a general wildlife sighting point of view. Photographically, um, ah, oh, people might not like this, but Madikwe is a difficult photographic destination. Fantastic, look, sightings, beautiful. You get nice and up close, awesome guides, most of them. Um, but difficult, difficult shooting because it's messy. The shrub is messy. Um, there's lots of sickle bush. You get the moments where things just work, but it is difficult. Pilansburg, on the other hand, the sighting sometimes not as great. However, I'm talking photographically now, remember. Um, but the landscape, photographically speaking, is phenomenal. Rolling hills, volcanic mountains, it's a beautiful place. Anyway, I enjoy both. Let me know what you guys think. Um, so, what else? Um, in other news, uh, sorry, Adele's coming in, yes. Oh, I'm getting coffee, how cool is that? Thank you. Um, cheers, there you go, you see, that's service. Thanks, Adele. Um, then, other news, photographically, a lot of time has now been spent on the website. So, 
we are ticking over on Facebook and we're doing our thing slowly. As soon as the website up, we'll be back to blogging again. What else? Oh, new iPad. I upgraded. Very exciting. iPad 2. Um, and I also upgraded to a nice new green. Imagine that. Wild Eye green cover. Very cool. What that made me think of. So the moment I take this iPad out the box, it is very exciting because it's a new iPad. New camera. Right. So what can it do differently? It's got a camera built in. It's apparently lighter and it's apparently faster. Who knows? Now, the problem I have, and the amount of times I've seen this in the last couple of days, and speaking to people at our opening who ask about cameras, is what is the newest? What is the best camera? It just doesn't stop, guys. I mean, I can give my grandmother, no offense, Granny, I can give her a D3S with a new 70 to 200, which is state of the art stuff. She will have no idea what to do with it. So it's what you do with the equipment. Also, and this is also important, a lot of it I saw this weekend, and also chatting to people about how do you create this image because that's so great and this the other. They're looking for secrets. They're looking to what is your secret to creating great photographs. And what I've seen online now looking around for information and things, a lot of websites and these, these books that you can buy online, buy now for five dollars, otherwise it costs five hundred, I don't know, um, is they, 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 they try and, and sell you the secrets to create better photographs. This is the reality. There is no secret. We can all do it. As long as you understand the basics between aperture, what does it do, shutter speed, what does it do, and ISO, what does it do, and how they work into relationship with the other. That is technically all you need to know. Not even to create good photographs. So know the basics. From a, um, a creative point of view, it's practice. Shooting with other photographers, going on workshops, joining people, reading blogs, writing your own blogs. It also helps. Um, but you know, it's just, I found it amazing in the last couple of days with, um, with our opening and meeting a lot of people. What is the secret to taking good photographs? There is no secret. It's practice and knowing the basics. So, if you have any thoughts on that, drop me a line. Um, alternatively, I am going to, I think, pretty much wrap up from here. So, what's next? Right, every Friday you know we've got the Friday photo tip. Last week we had a look, last Friday we had a look at color. So I've already got a couple. If you have any color images that you were able to get, send them through. We'll drop them on the video on Friday, which is literally, it's about three or four minutes. So it's four minutes of ideas for the weekend, and then the next week we recap and then try something new. So if you have any images you want to see on the video, drop them through to me on my email, which will be at the end of this. And yeah, we can take it from there. All right, Andrew's out of the office this week, but uh, make sure to check out his video. If you have any questions, Facebook, Twitter, we're all on there. You've got the email address at the end of this video. Um, any questions? I think that's about it. Have a good one. I will see you guys on Friday. Enjoy.